Welcome to TED Health. I'm Dr. Shoshana Ungerleiter. Today, we have a talk by author Daniel Pink, who spent years collecting stories from thousands of people about what they regret and what that means about the human experience. Then after the talk, I share some of the science around what regret can teach us and when to just let it go. Let's talk about regret. It is, to my mind, our most misunderstood emotion. And so I decided to spend a couple of years studying it. And one of the things that I did is I went back and I looked at about 50 years of social science on regret. And here's what it tells you. I'll save you the the trouble of reading a half century of social science. The research tells us that everybody has regrets. Uh, Regrets make us human. Truly, the only people without regrets are five-year-olds, people with brain damage, and sociopaths. The rest of us We have regrets. And if we treat our regrets right, and that's a big if, but there are ways to do it, regrets can actually make us better. They can improve our decision-making skills, improve our negotiation skills, make us better strategists, make us better problem solvers, enhance our sense of meaning uh, if we treat them right. And the good news is that there's a systematic way to do that. Uh, But I want to take just a few minutes to tell you about another aspect of regret that I think is really, really just super interesting. As part of the research here, I decided to ask people for their regrets. And to my surprise, I ended up collecting about 16,000 regrets from people in 105 countries. It's an extraordinary trove. And what I realized when I went through this incredible database of human longing and aspiration is that around the world, and there's very little national difference here, people kept expressing the same four regrets. Around the world, there are the same four regrets that keep coming up over and over and over again. So what I want to do is just quickly tell you about these four core regrets, because I think they reveal something incredibly important and interesting. So the four core regrets that I'm going to cover. Number one, what I call foundation regrets, foundation regrets. These are people who regret things like this, not saving enough money, which would be like, you know, financial regret, not taking care of their health and not eating right health regret, but they're the same. Those kinds of regrets are about making choices that didn't allow you to have some stability, a stable platform for their life. I have a lot of people who regret not working hard enough in school, a lot of people who regret, um, I got a lot of regrets about not saving money. And it's the kind of thing, it reminds me a little bit of Aesop's fable of the ant and the grasshopper, uh, where earlier in their life, they acted like a grasshopper instead of the ant, and now it's catching up with them. So foundation regrets sound like this. If only, and that's the catchphrase of regret, if only. If only I'd done the work. Second category. I love this category. It's fascinating. Boldness regrets. Boldness regrets. I have hundreds of regrets around the world that go like this. X years ago, there was a man slash woman whom I really liked. I wanted to ask him or her out on a date, but... I was too scared to do it, and I've regretted it ever since. I also have hundreds of regrets by people who say, oh, I always wanted to start a business, but I never had the guts to, to do that. People who said, oh, I always, like, I wish I'd spoken up more. I wish I'd said something and asserted myself. These are, these are what, as I said before, what I call boldness regrets. And we get to a juncture in our life, and we have a choice. We can play it safe, or we can take the chance. And what I found is overwhelmingly, people regret not taking the chance. Even people who took the chance and it didn't work out don't really have many regrets about that. It's the people who didn't take the chance. So this is boldness regrets. Boldness regrets sound like this. If only I'd taken the chance. Third category, moral regrets. Very interesting, very interesting category. These are people who, again, a lot of these regrets begin at a juncture. You're at a juncture. You can do the right thing or you can do the wrong thing. People do the wrong thing and they regret it. I mean, one of the most amazing, one of the ones that I just really stuck with me, I'm going to try to pull it up here, is this one here. This woman, she's a 71 year old woman in New Jersey. When I was a kid, my mother would send me to a small local store for a few items. I frequently would steal a candy bar when the grocer wasn't looking. That's bothered me for about 60 years. So, 71 year old woman in New Jersey. For 60 years, she's been bugged by this moral breach. And, and so moral regrets, uh, we have people regretting bullying. We have people regretting marital infidelity, all kinds of things. Moral regrets sound like this. If only I'd done the right thing. 
And finally, our fourth category are what I call connection regrets. Connection regrets are like this. You have a relationship or ought to have a relationship. And it doesn't matter what the relationship is. Kids, parents, siblings, cousins, friends, colleagues. But you have a relationship or ought to have had a relationship. And the relationship comes apart. And what's interesting is that what these 16,000 people were telling me is that the way these relationships come apart is often not very dramatic. Not very dramatic at all. They often come apart by drifting apart rather than through some kind of explosive rift. And what happens is that people don't want to reach out because they say, oh, it's going to be awkward to reach out and the other side's not going to care. One of the lessons that I learned from this book for myself is always reach out. So that's what connection regrets are. If only I'd reached out. And so over and over and over again, we see these same regrets. Foundation regrets. If only I'd done the work. Boldness regrets, if only I'd taken the chance. Moral regrets, if only I'd done the right thing. And connection regrets, if only I'd reached out. And when we look at these regrets, so that's interesting in itself, but what I realized is that these four core regrets operate as a kind of photographic negative of the good life. Because if we understand what people regret the most, we actually can understand what they value the most. And each of these regrets, to my mind, reveals something fundamental about humanity and about what we need. We need stability. Nobody wants to have an unstable life. We want a chance to learn and grow and do something. We recognize that we are not here forever and we want to do something and try something and at least feel the the exhilaration of being bold. Moral regrets. I think most of us, almost all of us, want to do the right thing. At some level, these Moral regrets are very heartening. The idea that people are bugged for years, decades, by these moral breaches earlier in their life. I think most of us want to do the right thing. And then connection regrets. We want love. Not love only in the romantic sense, but love in the broader sense of connection and relationship and affinity with other people. And so in a weird way, this negative emotion of regret points the way to a good life. By studying regret, we know what constitutes a good life. A life of stability, a life where you have a chance to take a few risks, a life where you're doing the right thing, and a life where you have people who love you and whom you love. And so to me, I started out saying, oh boy, is this going to, is this book going to be a downer studying regret? And it ended up being very uplifting. Um, so, so those are the four core regrets. Regret points us to the good life. And so um, I hope that you'll begin to reckon with your own regrets because I think they're going to give you direction to a life well-lived, to a life. Welcome back. So we've heard that regrets, both big and small, are just a part of being human. And I wonder, does that mean they're also useful? Researcher Neil Rose of the Kellogg School of Management at Northwestern University is a leading expert in the field of regret research. And his answer is yes. But it turns out just how useful regrets are depends on your age. Rose believes the experience of regret can motivate us to change course and make better decisions in the future, which can make regret a useful tool, especially for younger people. And it also seems that we're often able to recognize this benefit of regret, even if the experience of feeling regret is really painful. In one of his studies, the participants ranked regret the highest of 12 negative emotions on five psychological functions, making sense of past experiences, facilitating approach behaviors, facilitating avoidance behaviors, gaining insights into the self, and in preserving social harmony. So if regret is seemingly a good thing, why are so many people walking around with t-shirts and hats and bumper stickers announcing, no regrets. Well, whether that's an aspiration or a declaration, maybe it's time to rethink this life philosophy. Perhaps it sounds like a bold way to brand yourself, but in actuality, no regrets suggest a lack of learning from your mistakes or even acknowledging them as mistakes. When we have a healthy relationship with regret, Maybe this can help us live in a way that's aligned with our values. So maybe it's time to embrace learning from our regrets rather than pretending we don't have them. But as we get older, it's a bit of a different story. 
It turns out regrets can have harmful effects if we hold on to them for too long. A study in the journal Science suggests that while young adults may benefit from regret, older adults may be better off letting go of them completely. Because the older we are, the less time and opportunity we have to make it right or fix our regrets, and ruminating on them doesn't help. Instead, continually revisiting regrets may actually diminish older people's quality of life and can lead to depression. According to the study, the ability to disengage from regret is a critical factor for emotional health as we age. In my experience taking care of patients, and especially those near the end of life, regret often lies in words which are left unsaid, in acts of love and connection which go unshared, which we are able to reconcile. But others wish they could turn back time, regretting working so hard, are not letting themselves be happier throughout their lives. Ultimately, how to best handle regret comes down to asking two simple questions. Are we actually able to change what we regret? Or are we better off appreciating the lesson, letting go, and moving on? Your answer to those questions is a personal choice. Just remember, it is a choice. You can let regret crush you, Or you can learn from it. Or you can simply just let it go. Thanks so much for listening today. This episode was produced by Transmitter Media with help from Mitchell Johnson and fact-checked by Vanessa Garcia-Woodworth. And special thanks to Anna Phelan, Sammy Case, Grace Rubenstein, Maria Lagius, and Colin Helms. I'm Dr. Shoshana Ungerleiter. Stay well, and I'll talk to you next week.